Hello, this is the second of what I hope will be a series of short videos about photo line for the photographer. A series that's intended for English speaking amateur photographers who seek an alternative that means cheaper than Photoshop, external editor to use with their primary raw developer and digital asset manager. An editor with full layers and action capabilities. The photo line software is created and maintained by two brilliant German software engineers, Gerhard and Martin Huber. They concentrate on what's under the hood, eliminating bugs and solving users' problems, not on aesthetics. So don't be misled by the retro look of the software interface or the PL website. Photoline is very powerful. Photoline is much more than a bitmap editor. It also handles vectors, desktop publishing, and limited editing for the web. However, I'll focus on the editing capabilities for still images from a digital camera. In this video, I'll show you what I consider the most important parts of the Photoline GUI. Although I've done some customization of my general toolbar at the top, what you see here is similar to the default of a new install. Main tools on the left of the workspace, a selection of other operations and a general toolbar at the top, and a series of operational panels on the right of the workspace. Photoline help is context sensitive. Pressing F1 will bring up help information related to the tool you are using. Another helpful hint is the information bar in the lower left of the PL window. There will usually be a brief description of what the tool does and an explanation of how the tool is modified with the use of the Shift, Control, or Alt keys. There you'll find the tools to be used to modify those images you bring in from Lightroom, DxO Optics Pro, ACDC Pro, Zoner Photo Studio, etc. In the lower right hand corner of several of the tools, you'll find a small red triangle. That means there are more tools underneath. Just click and hold the mouse on the red triangle and you'll see options of more tools in a flyout. Among the toolbox icons is a stamp, but it's not the clone tool from Photoshop, PhotoPlus, or Elements. Instead, it's PL's version of Picture Tubes, the widely popular feature available in PaintShop Pro. Directly below the toolbox icons, you'll find two connected color swatches representing the selected foreground and background colors. Click on the line with the two arrowheads to reverse the colors in the foreground and background swatches. If you're working with mask, you'll need black and white colors. Click on the small black over white icon here at the left to make the defaults black and white. Next is the active brush selector with a small icon in the white swatch representing the brush. Brushes can have hard or soft edges. In this example here you see a brush with a soft edge. Click on the small triangle here to bring up brush options. Now is a good time to remind you a photo line like Photoshop does not use bracket keys for changing brush sizes. Instead, hold down the control key and drag the mouse to make the brush larger or smaller. Larger and smaller. That works with brushes and tools also. This resizing method, in my opinion, is much more intuitive than using the bracket keys. Next you'll see four mask icons. Photoline does not use the conventional Photoshop definitions for what we commonly think of as selection and mask. Instead, both selections and mask are known as mask in Photoline. The little collection of mask icons here are switches. And here's Use Mask. Here is Edit Mask. Here is Hide Show Lasso, and here is Show Mask. Next is a separate panel for adjustments of contrast, lightness, and the red, green, and blue channels. To increase, click the plus icon. To decrease, click 
the minus icon. There are better ways to make these adjustments, and I doubt you'll use this much, but it's probably better to leave this panel visible while you're learning photo line. Finally, on the left side is the color select field. You left click on a color to change the foreground color. And you hold down shift, left click to change the background color. Moving to the top of the work area, the title bar displays the name of the open file, the file type, the size of the file, and the percentage of the magnification in the workspace. Then there's the menu bar with drop-down selections arranged by category, and the general toolbar that can be customized with icons for the tools you use most often. In the file drop-down menu, you have two new creation options. One is for pictures, and the other is for documents. That would be text or desktop publishing documents you might produce in PhotoLine, but we're going to be concentrating with the picture use. Another item on the file menu is known as Browse. Browse is PhotoLine's internal method of viewing thumbnails and performing various processes on an entire folder of documents. When minimized, the browser window retires to the lower left of the screen, and you can click to bring it back or turn it off with the X button. An important part of the Edit drop-down column is at the very bottom, and it's the Options selection. It takes you to a window telling you all about the settings in photo line and allowing you to make changes in the way you set up photo line. You can customize it, customize keyboards, toolbars, etc. You should spend some time with this, getting to know it, and learn to customize photo line for your comfort. The View drop-down contains several important categories. First of all is a dialog layout, and this is similar to what uh, some of the other uh, software packages have so that you can save your workspace. And uh, I'm in what is called the typical layout, but I can switch to another layout that I've saved or I can return to the layout that we were working with. Dialog Layout provides a way for you to have multiple arrangements for panels. Selection of layout panels takes you to a place where you can choose the panels you want to show in the workspace. And here we have Map chosen. Uh, we also have the Undo List chosen and we have uh, some other things chosen too. Tool settings and our layer list. You can turn these off here, turn them on here. Um, if you ever lose a panel on the right hand side, you want to get it back on, this is where you change it. You go to view and panels. Note that simple browse is near the bottom of this list and we'll click it. It's a mini version of browse showing only thumbnails in a selected folder, and it could be a folder that's different than what you show in Browse. Simple Browse is a feature photo line added in a recent version, perhaps in response to competing photo applications use of what some call a film strip at the bottom of the screen. Simple Browse is designed to be free floating, if you wish, moving it anywhere, but at least in the Windows version, it lacks the ability to lock in place at the bottom of the PL work area. However, it can be snapped to the left side of the screen. Chances are you'll be using filters often, and here's the filters drop down. PL's internal filters are in the top section. Third-party filters you've added are listed in the lower section. 
PhotoLine will run most Photoshop 8BF type filters. Let's move now to the working panels on the right side of the screen. Here we see the panels that tend to be used most of the time. They can be opened, minimized, repositioned, removed, and then added again. Here's a minimize button. This is a close button. Here's the adjustment layer that is minimized. We can show all of the adjustment layer this way and then minimize it again. Back to the tool settings in the top. The tool settings panel is open at the top and it's a very important panel because it shows all the options that you have for the tools in use. Yeah, so it should probably be left open and remain in the top position. One precaution about this tool setting panel, however. Note the X close button here. And notice its proximity to the other X close button. And that's for the image you have open. It's very easy to by mistake, and when you're wanting to close out an image, you move the cursor over here and you hit the tool settings close button instead. That turns it off. Uh, remember, if you lose it, you turn it off by accident, all you have to do is go back to the view panels menu and click tool settings to turn it back on. Probably the most important of the panels you'll be using in editing your photos is the layers panel. Always make a duplicate copy of the background layer before doing any work on an image. You do that by right-clicking and duplicating layer. Or you could choose the icon down here for duplicating layer too. The familiar blend options available in other applications is on this drop-down in the layers panel. You have a lot of different kinds of blends to select from. The opacity of a layer and I'll turn off, I have actually have two layers here and I'm going to uh, turn on this bottom layer and show you how the opacity works. You simply move the cursor to the box here that shows percentages and click and then move your mouse wheel and that adjusts the opacity in percentages of 10. You can change it by one using the up and down arrows. One thing different in photo line, you can actually get an opacity of up to 200% plus or an opacity of minus 200%. If you're coming from Photoshop or Elements, the drag and drop operation with layers doesn't apply to PhotoLine. Instead, you right click on the layer for options or click on one of the options at the bottom of the panel. Let's come back to mask here. To create a mask in PhotoLine, you simply click on this icon and you have a drop down and you choose create. For non-destructive editing operations using PhotoLine's native tools, the application has more than 40 adjustment layer operations that can be applied. And we choose the adjustment layer and here is the long list of options that you have uh, for creation of an adjustment layer for non-destructive editing. Well, that's my overview of some of the important features of the PhotoLine interface. I hope this has been helpful to you, and thanks for viewing.